Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, painfully aware that I'm the last thing standing between you and uh, wine tasting, so I'll try and keep this brief. I have uh, 66 slides to get through in my presentation, so I'll rip through them reasonably quickly. Uh, and I don't think there'll be time for Q&A at the end, but I'll be at the wine tasting, so do please feel free to come up and ask me any questions. Also, my details are here. This is my best Steve Jobs impression. Uh, you can see there uh, my, my job title, my email address, my uh, blog, uh, my Twitter account, my mobile phone, although it's over there at the moment, so no point in calling it right now, and my SlideShare. Uh, SlideShare, if you're not familiar with it, is a site into which you can upload presentations uh, and people can then see them online at that site. I've uploaded this presentation to that site an hour ago, and it's already been seen over 200 times. So you're the last guys to see it. Sorry about that. So that's me. Quick show of hands here who you guys are. How many people in the, in the room here work for a utility company? OK, good number of people. How many people here work for an organization that has an active social media account, be it Twitter, Facebook, uh, reasonable number again? OK. How many people here work for an organization that actively blocks some of their employees from seeing social media? Quite a number as well. OK, interesting. Good. That gives me a good idea of where to pitch the, the, the conversation. So I'm going to run a video for you after this, sorry, <laughs> power of social media. If anyone doubts the power of social media, you might want to have a conversation with this chap. This is Hosni Mubarak, former president of Egypt for 30 years, now behind bars, largely overthrown with uh, a lot of organization done online using Facebook and Twitter. He's now uh, being charged with corruption and murder. So uh, an interesting case study in the power of social media. So I'm going to run this video. And um, it's a video which gives you an idea of uh, some of the things that are happening in social media at the moment. Uh, some of the data points in it, and there are a lot of data points in it, so don't try and take them all in, just to try and let it flow over you. Uh, some of the data points in it are a little dated at this point. Uh, the video was made about six months ago, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, things keep moving on at an incredible pace in this industry. So here we go. I said, here we go. Here we go.
Okay, that's my presentation. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. So one, one thing I should say about this slide deck, as I said, it's available on SlideShare. Underneath each of the images, you'll see a little bit of text there. It's hard to read from here. It's not meant to be read from here. It's actually a clickable link. So if you do download the slide, and I think Steve will be making it available as well through the uh, Eventful Group site, uh, those links are clickable. So you'll be able to go and find those videos and the photographs and anything else that's on the, the, the presentation. So that's all very good. Social media, cures cancer, all that good stuff. What does that mean for utility companies? Well, utility companies have a number of challenges facing them at the moment. They have a lot of challenges facing them at the moment, but there's a number of them in particular that I've identified that I think uh, social media will be able to help with. One of the things uh, utility companies have is an, an aging workforce. The US uh, Department, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics has said that in the next 30 to 40, sorry, in the next 10 years, 30 to 40% of the utility workers are going to retire. Now, I was talking to Dave Fortis, sorry, Dave Legg, sorry, I'm getting confused here, Dave Legg of Fortis PC the other night, and he told me that in his organization, that's 50% in the next five years. So somewhere between 30 to 50% of employees are going to retire in the next five to 10 years from utility companies. That's a massive loss of knowledge right there. It's also a huge, uh, it's, it, it's a huge challenge in the recruitment and retention area. Some of these things social media will be able to help with. Utility companies have an image issue. They're thought of as, at best, boring by their customers. And in some cases, they have a bit of a credibility deficit. Consumers often are a bit wary of trusting utility companies when they say, we'd like you to use less power. They're facing, utility companies are facing increasing demands for energy at a time of dwindling supply. And they're also facing increasing demands for things like uh, customer service, for um, environmental footprint, re footprint reduction, uh, and assorted other things like that. So how can social media help? Well. In the recruitment sphere, a very obvious one is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a phenomenal channel for recruitment. And one of the key aspects of LinkedIn that a lot of people may overlook is the groups functionality in LinkedIn. This is the uh, energy and utilities network. It's a very, uh, it's a thriving community in there. And for utility companies, it's a good place to go to kind of push out your brand, be knowledgeable, exchange information, get people on board, and be seen as a company that's plugged into social media and is willing to give away information. That way your, your company's brand is out there and it's, it's seen to be more social media savvy. In terms of retention, we saw a number of people in the room put their hands up when I asked how many, site, how many companies block social media. It's a big mistake. Again, in a conversation with uh, Dave from Fortis, he gave me a story of uh, an interview situation where a young graduate was in an, in an interview, and it came time for the graduate to ask questions to the interview board, and he said, what's your company's policy on social media? And the company said, well, we, we block it. We don't let our employees use social media. And his response was, right, thanks very much for your time, and he walked out. Now, that may well be an apocryphal story, but it's indicative of a mentality in graduates who are now in university or who have recently left university. They are used to these tools. They use these tools all the time for information dissemination and for information collection. You bring them into your organization, and you'll need to, because you're losing a lot of people at the other end. You bring them into your organization, and you have social media sites blocked. It's like putting a rotary phone on their desk with a padlock on the dial. So another challenge social media can help with, as I said, is around image and the fact that utility companies are often perceived as boring. Another company that had this kind of uh, staid and tired image was a company called Old Spice. They make cologne, men's cologne, and bath products and things like that. And they decided last year that they were going to go on a bit of a social media spree and rebrand themselves. Well, not rebrand, but spruce up their image a bit. 
So they ran a series of ads on YouTube, and this is one of them. I'll just run it for you. Hello, ladies. Look at your man. Now back to me. Now back at your man. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But if he stopped using ladies' scented body wash and switched to Old Spice, he could smell like he's me. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on a boat with the man your man could smell like. What's in your hand? Back at me. I have it. It's an oyster with two tickets to that thing you love. Look again. The tickets are now diamonds. Anything is possible when your man smells like Old Spice and not a lady. I'm on a horse. <laughs> this campaign went completely viral because that's such a good ad. And they ran a series of follow-up ads. In fact, they ran a 24-hour series of ads where people could submit questions on Twitter, and that actor would reply to the questions in a similar format. It went wild. It went ballistic. The ad itself has currently had about 36 million views on Twitter. Just that one ad, not all the other ads, just that one ad. The other ads have had lots of, of views as well. That's cool. That's great. But even more importantly, Old Spice sales increased 100% in the month following that campaign. And a year later, they're still up 50%. The brand, the Old Spice brand, has become sexy and cool. And with a guy like that, it's obviously going to be sexy. But it's become cool and hip and trendy. I mentioned knowledge management and a lot of knowledge walking out the door with the, the elder generation as they start to retire. Well, you're not going to be able to suck the information out of their heads, not within a, a device like this anyway. But what you can do is you can start rolling out some social media platforms because the old knowledge management techniques never really ran so well. But when you make it more interesting for people, they start becoming more willing to share the information. Now, you don't really want to be having the pointy-haired boss type blogger on board. Uh, that one never goes down that well. But what you want to do is you want to roll out, for example, an internal blogging scheme. Uh, don't bother trying to read that. It's just an example. That's a screenshot of an internal blog on IBM. The blogger there is a guy called Luis Benitez. One of the things to notice is, you see a little red circle up there? I've got that circling a way of recommending that blog post. If you're on the internal IBM blog and you read that blog, and you think, oh, that's a good blog post. Got a lot out of that. You can click on that little green button there, and it gets an extra star. So it's a rating mechanism for blog posts on that internal platform, the IBM internal blog platform. IBM have got 18,000 blogs on their internal platform, 18,000 individual blogs. And that's a huge sea of information. And as people blog and as they put up posts, they're either recommended if they're good or they're not, and they get lost if they're not good. You can see as well that on this platform, on the right-hand side, you've got similar blogs listed. So if this is one you find particularly interesting, you see similar bloggers there, that, and that's automatically generated based on the content. On the left-hand side, you've got a, what's called a tag cloud. Clicking on any of those words in the tag cloud gets you similar content. So it's an incredible way of getting information spread out through the organization and collated back in again. And as I say, there's 18,000 of them there. This is another blog. It's a friend of mine, a guy called Andy Piper. And Andy Piper is celebrating in this blog post his sixth anniversary as an internal blogger on the IBM blogging platform. So he's been at it six years. In fact, the blogging platform, the internal blogging platform on IBM has been going strong for eight years now. So IBM have got this stuff mastered. And they're not the only ones. There's lots of other companies doing it. But it's a great way of capturing that information and sharing it throughout the organization. You don't have to just stick with blogs. You, you want to be taking a, a broad approach to this. This is a screenshot of Wikipedia, and just happens to be the SAP Wikipedia page. But the, the circle up there is circling. You don't bother trying to read it. It's far away, I know, and small. But the circle there is circling the Edit button. You might not have noticed it, but on every single Wikipedia page, there's an Edit button. And this means you can click on the Edit button and change the content of the page. And that's what makes Wikipedia so powerful. Anyone can change the content of any page on the site. So if you know something is wrong on a page, you can go in and correct it. And an example of this for me that was really interesting 
was a few years ago when I was living in Ireland. Uh, I was working in the kitchen at home on my laptop, and I had the radio on in the background. And it was around the time of the papal enclave. They were electing a new pope. And uh, the radio was on, I was listening to music, and the next minute the news broke into the programming and said, the cardinals are out on the balcony in St. Peter's Square. We think they're going to make an announcement. And the next minute, the voices start coming over, speaking Latin, no idea what they were saying. But I heard the word Ratzinger. And I recognized he had been mentioned in a couple of previous news broadcasts as Cardinal Ratzinger, a German uh, cardinal who was up for the, the papacy. So I immediately pull up Wikipedia, type in Ratzinger, and I'm redirected straight away, in real time, before the Latin has finished, to the web page on Wikipedia of uh, Pope Benedict, the whatever number he is. I start reading down through it, and I see a section in it uh, about alleged Nazi links in his youth. And I call my wife over to look at it, and I say, look at this. And I refresh the page, and it's gone. It's been edited out. It turns out it wasn't true, what had been said there. So it happens in real time. Stuff is corrected. If you go in and you make a change on that SAP page or any page in there, and it's factually incorrect, the chances are within minutes it'll be edited back out. Uh, PB Works is a company that provide a hosted wiki for you. So I was, I was using that when I was based in an, in an organization in Cork called IT at Cork. Really good. There's a number of other ones I'll, I'll show up in a second. I just happened to use this one. Uh, it's a hosted wiki. Uh, what we used to do with that one in, in the organization was we used to have weekly uh, board meetings. And uh, whoever was taking the minutes would plug in their laptop to the data projector. And they'd take the minutes, and the minutes would be dis displayed up on screen for everyone who was in the meeting to see. So everyone was watching the minutes as they were being taken. And if people were given an assignment or signed up to do something, that was noted in the minutes and their initials put beside it. And during the following week, they would go in themselves and update the wiki page on how they were getting on with their assignment. So that the following week, when everyone came to the meeting, everyone had already read the minutes of the previous one and the updates to it. And then the next meeting happened, everyone was on the same page, everyone saw the, the minutes for that meeting. So everyone saw and everyone signed off on the, uh, the, the tasks that had been assigned and everyone saw in real time how they were being updated. That's just one use case for a wiki. Uh, but it's a really good one. It saves on a lot of email, for example. Uh, PB Works are one company that provide them. Uh, another one is Social Text. Uh, another one is Mind Touch. They're all good. I'm not going to recommend any one above the other. They all provide the same kind of functionality. If people are not into writing, maybe some people are better at speaking than writing, put up a video blogging platform for them. Or go around with a camera and just start interviewing people, asking them what they're doing and put it up on a central site, put it up on YouTube, and just have it for internal viewing if that's what you want, or let everyone see it, why not? Other kind of communications platforms and sharing and collaboration platforms that are available are ones like Salesforce's chatter.com, which allows you internally to have a kind of a, a Facebook and a collaborative Facebooking application internally. You can invite customers in as well if you want or not, but it can be internal or internal and external. You get similar um, uh, functionality from things like Huddle, and this is SAP's Streamwork application, which is uh, reasonably similar as well. And this is Ripple. Uh, Ripple is a performance management application, which is collaborative and sharing, and it, it, it's open and transparent, and everyone sees. So it's, it's another one of these applications. The, the point about these applications is these are the kinds of applications that people are using in college at the moment. And these are the kinds of applications and the kinds of functionality they expect when they go into their new employer. And they will feel extremely restricted if they don't have access to these kinds of tools, which they're already well familiar with. And they'll get frustrated if, they don't, if, they, if, you're, if you're hobbling their functionality. They'll get frustrated and they'll move on. And that's not what you want. This, for example, is a Google spreadsheet. Google provide spreadsheet functionality. In this particular screenshot, it's two people working on the spreadsheet at the same time. The spreadsheet is delivered via a browser. There's two people working on it, the blue one and the red one. And over on the right-hand side, 
you can see a chat stream that's going on as they're talking to each other about the edits they're making to the spreadsheet. And they can be anywhere in the world. So those are some scenarios. There's customer service scenarios, which are phenomenal, that can be addressed using uh, social media as well. A great case study here is KLM. Last year, when we had the volcano on the ash cloud over Europe, KLM hired 120 people and put them full time in shifts, full time monitoring specifically Facebook and Twitter, the two key ones. And they, had, they, they were monitoring them. They were looking for mentions of KLM. They were looking for KLM customers who were stranded somewhere. And they did their best. And they went all out until the ash cloud cleared up. They kept the volume of calls down at the call center to a minimum. It was so successful for KLM that they continued the program. They scaled it down because they didn't need 120 anymore. But they now have 23 people full time on social media in their social media department, constantly monitoring mentions of KLM, reaching out to people, helping anyone who's in trouble. There was a hurricane here a couple of weeks back up the East Coast. And a great example of a response to a hurricane using social media was Baltimore Gas and Electric. It was one of the ones I found. There was a number of them. But Baltimore Gas and Electric really went to town on it. You can see this is their home page. And the yellow bit at the top is informational. And you can click on links there and go in and get more information about Irene. But down in the bottom right there, you see there are links to their different social media channels. And their, their Twitter one is highlighted. And these are all links. So on their, uh, on their YouTube page, they had 20, 25 videos about Irene. The first nine videos they put up about Irene were about preparation, getting ready for Irene's coming. This is what you need to do. The next 16 videos they put up about Irene were about the restoration works that were going on in the different parts of their constituency. So people who were frustrated because they were out of power, they, at least they knew that BGE was going all out, and they had people in different areas, and they could actually watch them working and see interviews with the guys who were doing the work. Not alone that, but they, had a, they, they were monitoring Twitter as well. They had 4,000 Twitter followers on their Twitter account. They were doing things like they were saying to people, you can see the bottom one there, they're saying to people, DM me your address, and I'll send you an ETR. DM is Twitter speak for send it to me privately so that no one else sees your address. Send it to me privately. I'll take a look, and I'll send you back an ETR, an estimated time of restoration. They're answering people's questions, and they're also telling people in the top one what percentage of restoration they're at at this point. On their, on their Facebook page, they have something like, what is it, 5,800 followers. And again, they're doing the same thing. They're looking at people going to their Facebook page. People are asking questions about the restoration, and they're answering them in real time. They had a Flickr stream. Flickr is a photographic site, a photo sharing site. They had 158 photos related to Irene. So again, people could go in there, and they could see what was going on. And it's not just Irene-related stuff. This is the playlists page on their YouTube's channel. They have videos there related to community programs they're involved with, related to safety with electricity, related to news coverage they received, related to smart energy. And these are all groups of videos put together. You can go into any of those and check out any of the videos they have on them. Dominion was another one that did really well. Dominion have, you can see the videos they put up there. Some of those videos have had 6,000 views. People are really interested in finding out what was going on, obviously, around Irene. And Dominion's Twitter account, they have over 7,000 followers, over 3,000 tweets. And again, they were doing a stellar job about keeping people informed. This is PSNH's video page. They weren't as, PSNH didn't seem to be as out there on, on, on the social media front. But the little circle I have there shows that this particular video that they put out there was picked up by a local news organization. And that's interesting. Because if you're putting this content out there, the news organizations are hungry for content around this stuff because it's a big story. 
And if you're controlling the content, if you're putting the content out there, then it's your content that gets shown on the news. You're, you're helping drive the story, and it's your story that's being told in your voice with your people. Now, here's a thought for you. What if every truck roll for an outage has a smartphone as a matter of course so that when they get to site, there's an outage, maybe a truck hit a pole or a tree came down. The first thing one of the guys in the truck does is gets out the smartphone, takes a quick video of what's after happening, does a bit of a voiceover, says we arrived here at this time on this day, uh, this is what's after happening, we reckon it'll take us about an hour to fix, we should be back up at this time. And then he clicks a button to post to YouTube. It's entirely possible today. All it, does, all it takes is a process change. And what happens? Your people on Twitter, your people on Facebook are monitoring the YouTube channel. Soon as any queries come in, they direct all queries to the YouTube page. See this video on our YouTube page. This is what's after happening. This is when we'll be back up. We have people on the ground. This is them working on it. Suddenly people know what's after happening, know when the power will be back on, and they're far less frustrated with the lack of power. You can also do things like crowdsource ideas from your customers. Dell have this idea storm page, fantastic page. They've had something like 16,000 suggestions come into them on this page. And the suggestions, I mean, anyone can put in a ridiculous suggestion there, but what they do is they get everyone who visits the page, they give them the ability to vote up or vote down ideas and to comment on ideas. So far, they've implemented nearly 500 of the ideas. So these are ideas that people are coming in, giving Dell, please, please do this with the next laptop, whatever it is, add this functionality to it. And you know if people have come in and recommended it and commented on it, and it's an active idea. You have got an audience that are dying for this laptop or desktop or monitor or whatever it is. So as soon as you bring that to market and tell people, we took your idea on board, and here's the product. You've got a ready audience of people just flocking to it to buy it. Starbucks did the same thing, actually, and there's a number of organizations doing that. They're not alone. The platform that allows people to do that is one called Get Satisfaction. They're a startup out of uh, California. They, they, they're a platform for companies to do this kind of thing, to crowdsource ideas, to uh, talk up brand evangelists. No SAP event would be, uh, or no SAP talk would be uh, complete without some reference to analytics. So social media is a, an area that's ripe for analytics, and there's a lot going on in that space as well. And another video for you. This time, it's from a, a source you wouldn't expect. It's from Gatorade, the drinks people. And Gatorade have built a social media analytics application for themselves, but it gives you an idea of the kinds of things you can do with social uh, media and analytics. stuff. They say they're tracking their own brand, and I'm sure they are, but you know as well that they're, they're tracking all their competitors as well. 
The application mission control that they're using there was built with the aid of a company called Radian 6. Radian 6 were bought by Salesforce a couple of weeks back for $340 million. Uh, Radian 6 aren't the only player in the game. IBM have a social media analytics application that they released earlier this year. Adobe have one which they got by their purchase of Omniture last year for $1.8 billion. And SaaS have one as well, and there are a number of other players out there. Uh, there's a German one at Vantech or something like that, and there's a few others in startup mode on various stages. So it's, it's a hot happening area. So I mentioned energy management and the increasing demands that utilities are facing around energy, and you know, what, how, how can we affect that with social media? Well, firstly, you've got to be aware that according to this article study released not so long ago, at least 95% of your customers are interested in energy management information or energy consumption information. And then you get these kinds of applications being released. This is one out of SAP Research, and it's, it's, it's a kind of a prototype energy management application. It's not that interesting, really. There's a metric called the mean time to kitchen drawer. It's also known as the mean time to junk drawer. I think you know what it is. It's, you know, you get something, this energy management application, and it's all shiny, and you flip on a light switch, and the graph goes up, and you flip off the light switch, and the graph goes down, and ooh, that's cool, for about 10 minutes. And then a week or two later, you might look at it again, and a month or two later, and eventually it's consigned to the proverbial kitchen drawer, and you never see it again. So how do you fix that? Well, this is the new smart meter analytics application that SAP are releasing. And they've gone some way towards fixing it. They've got little buttons there for sharing that information with your social graph. You can push it out to your Twitter account or your Facebook account. And you know, just push the button, and you get this thing up, and you click Submit, and it's sent out to your site. And that's cool. Digressing for a second, this is a site called Foursquare. Nothing to do with energy. Foursquare is a location application. Uh, when you go somewhere, you can check into that location on Foursquare, which tells people where you are at this point in time. So if I go to this hotel, I can check into this hotel on Foursquare and say, I'm here. And if anyone in my network is around, I get notified that people I know are in the area. And if I didn't know that, that's cool. That's great. I get to meet them. Excellent. I didn't know they're in the area. Fantastic. So that's nice. But as well as that, it gives you tips and tricks on the things in the area. So, oh, there's a nice restaurant a couple of miles down the road you might want to try out. It has all this kind of stuff as well. It's a phenomenal resource. That's nice. Again, nothing to do with energy so far. What it also has, though, because you usually check in on a phone, right? because it's got your GPS, and it's something that's always with you. So when you check in on the phone and say where you are, if you've checked in there a few times, there's a possibility that you'll be the person who's checked in there most in the last X number of days, and then you become the mayor of that location. So in this one, I became the mayor of this hotel in Milan. And you get points. So I got an extra five points for that check-in because I, got, I stole the mayorship from some Japanese guy. And there's a leaderboard there. So I went up the leaderboard by those extra points, and I'm suddenly tied with John, John Pivoy. Tells me there, nice, you caught up with John. So suddenly, you're starting to get a bit of competition in there. And that gets interesting. And then you start to get merit badges and achievement badges and all kinds of cool things like that. Now, what if we take this energy management application? And on top of that, we layer in not just the ability to share to Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and whatever social network is, uh, floats your boat? What if you have leaderboards on these energy management applications? What if you have achievement badges? What if you start adding in targets and scores? Then it becomes fun. Then you build engagement, and you're empowering people. And people are telling each other, see how we did last week on this energy management application? I pulled ahead an extra five points. Awesome. And what if you start feeding that into schools programs so you get kids involved and you get the old pester power on the parents to turn off the lights and stuff like that? Then it becomes really cool. And then it gets 
spread out there. And then people start to become really involved. So back to the challenges I mentioned at the start. Some of the things social media can help with. Can help with making utility companies a little less boring. Help with customer service. And the better the customer service, the more trusted the organization becomes. You start making the utility company become more sexy. How many kids do you hear in school who say, oh, I'd love to work for that utility company. They're so cool. I haven't heard any. But if you start making them more social media savvy, and a company puts out ads like that uh, uh, after, uh, what? Old Spice Guy, thank you. <laughs> Mind freeze. Old Spice Guy. So start getting some handsome actors out there with, I don't know, crimping tools. <laughs> you know what I mean. Start making utilities sexy. Start getting them social media savvy. Start communicating with your customers in ways they want to hear about. And then you start to uh, solve a lot of the kind of problems that are, you know, the challenges that you're facing at the moment. Thanks very much. I have a, by the way, I have a mind map of this talk at the end there. So if you want to see the kind of wild things that went through my head as I was trying to build this talk, it's, it's there too. Okay, thanks.